Bruce Play. I don't know when this episode started, but hello, welcome, goodbye, welcome back. This is Time Splitters. <laughs> I was gonna say this is Bros Play, but it also is Time Splitters, I guess. Yeah, sure, it's Bros Play also, and there's some stuff they're talking about, and there's a storyline and all that, and I'm upside down. Yeah. Welcome to the new. This is the new Bros Play. We're in the a new era. Long episodes, less, more casual, less non whatever the opposite of casual is. Yeah, Less I, professionalism. I do appreciate that we went from about 20 to about 30, and then now we're just like, eh, call it an hour and a half. Oh, 30. I thought you meant like... Dude, I got the sci-fi handgun. Okay, we're going to invert this. Yeah, immediately. <laughs> but yeah, we're. this is a new... This is an era of BS on BS. <laughs> More BS on yeah. the BS. We're going to be taking drinks... When appropriate, we might take bathroom breaks <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> in the middle, well, we could try to cut out bathroom breaks. Basically, uh, uh, we said done being uh, YouTube professionals. Yeah, and, and now we're doing this thing. It's way better to be an amateur. I question whether that volume is a problem. It'd be harder for you to sync it later. The what? Oh. But it'd be more fun for us in the moment to have. Oh yeah, to have yeah, and that's volume. the one thing I've noticed. I, I guess I think I feel like I've talked about this before, but I have never really played video games while listening to the noise, because when we were young, we would always play music. You know, we'd be listening oh. to System of a Down and stuff like that. So nowadays, I realize like I just never listen to game noises. I don't think you trust in my. Sci-fi gun. <laughs> I was trying to figure out where, when I was gonna make the joke, and it just wasn't happening. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just gotta commit, even if the joke is bad. It's better to have a complete bad joke. Yes, Doug Benson, I got uh, Seth Rogen, um, Seth MacFarlane. What are these all people Seth that complete Green. jokes? All people who aren't very good at jokes but commit, and are named Seth. Wow. Aren't very that good wasn't at jokes. The way to That's do kind that. of rude, but they are good at jokes. But Some of them but are they're good. They're just at jokes. good at committing. Like, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Conway Twitty. You know, that's uh, that's a fucking awkward ass thing to put into the. Oops. Well, Seth MacFarlane is kind of the king of that, isn't he? Of pushing a joke far enough to make it funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't have much of a shot there. He, but he acknowledged it. He was like, "We can't get through." <laughs> <laughs> Let me try anyways. <laughs> Don't worry, Sarge, I got this. Oh, wow, there's an explosive Yeah, barrel. apparently I shot a device. I tested this just to find out if it works. And when I was testing it, I did not get that. I did not hit that explosive. What? Yeah, everything's got like an alternate fire or something. Or no, if it has an up, it's got an alternate fire. So that's a bouncy, it's a bouncy button. So why would I shoot non-bouncy <laughs> missiles? Yeah, they're probably less oh, powerful. Oh, he's invisible! What do we they're, do? Yeah, they're probably less powerful. Oh, good, good point. Let me try that. The one thing I don't like is when you don't get a lot of like details. I would like to know like how much damage each shot does. Would you stop it? I can't see these invisible guys. Yeah, <laughs> it's unfair, man. Is there like a way? Oh, okay, I see. They they shoot electrical blasts. Oh. Just turn that volume down a little bit because it's like distracting for me, yeah. you know? I'm really glad that they boosted my ego because that was not good shooting at all. It was some of my worst shooting ever. Go ahead, Agent. You got an ego boost. Now you can, now you can, you don't shoot any better, but you feel better about it. Yeah, it's like, uh, oh uh, no. What really bothers me is that like crosshairs are always, uh, points, right? Like, like, a, like the cross between two things. And I think the best uh, aimer or re reticle is actually a circle. Especially when it gets like a tight circle that turns red when you shoot people. Hmm. That's satisfying. So what kind of a, what game would have that? Uh, Left 4 Dead. Or not Left 4 Dead. Uh, the Last of Us has like a circle. Because when you... When you're running, the circle like expands and then fades away, and then when you aim, it like comes in, 
and then huh. as you get better aim, it becomes like a tighter circle, and it's a really satisfying little... When Red Dead did a straight up dot, didn't they? <clears throat> Red Dead had many options, actually. My god, You could suck. change the reticle, actually, in Red Dead, I'm pretty sure. Really? Yeah. Wait, Red Dead 1 or 2? Both, I believe. Huh. Yeah, no, because they're, they're simple and complex, similar to the Grand Theft Auto games. Am I very much not enjoying these enemies? You're, you're supposed to use the uh, emplacement gun. Yeah, but they got behind me, and these guys weren't uh, weren't filling in the gaps. Well, the ones that are behind you. Easy to say when you can see them. This, this is an unlimited railgun. With absolutely no overheat. Yeah. Love it. This is how every weapon should be. But, but see, even this, like, there's still a balance to this because the enemies are fucking invisible. Yeah, and they're coming from every direction. The, uh, the one thing I keep telling people I want to see in the future, like I think would be the coolest thing in our lifetime, is nuclear batteries. Because uh, that's what I have to imagine they power something like this with. It's got to have like an infinite power source of some sort. <laughs> Damn! I was going to call him Crypto, but that's not his name. What's his name? Is it like Cortez or something? Yeah. Cortez? Uh, yeah, Cortez Time Twitter. Dude, the... the did you hear the guy yelling? Yes, dude. Oh, I, I no! think it's the exact same. Oh, God. It's the I think it's the voice actor from Ratchet and Clank 3 that plays those like wacky robots. Those uh, like surfer dude robots. They're like, oh man! Yeah. Watch out for the noids! <laughs> oh my god. There's so much character in those games. Whoa! Okay. I mean back I've got an opinion about it, but it doesn't really matter. Don't we all? You know what though? they 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 brought it back from Time, what are they called? I keep wanting to call it like, Time Splitters. <laughs> Ratchet and Clank, Clank Time Splitters. That'd be a Rift, sick next game. Rift Apart. Rift, Rift Apart. It was 2021, I believe. So it wasn't and a Rift in Time? One of the best... No. One of the best uh, reasons for a PS5. It's, it's, it's an excellent, excellent Ratchet and Clank game. Holy fuck, this railgun is loud. It is loud, and this is not a very interesting mission. I um, I forgot that this first one is basically an entire outlier. Like, every other mission you fight is set hundreds of years before this. Right. Because the, the whole thing is that you're jumping around through different time periods, and all the guns have their own reticles, which is the coolest fucking thing. There is a lot of character to this game. And fortunately, I left the health pickups this time. Mm. It's the last time I picked him up. That is not a subtle health bar. No, and I think there's like something, a mana bar or something on the other side. Shields, I would Hold say. your fire! <laughs> say it again. <laughs> These guys. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were invincible. Okay, well. I'm really glad that they recorded that voice line more than once. Yeah? Yeah. Was it different? No. Oh, that no, no. was sarcasm. Oh. Uh. Welcome to the world of subtlety. Did you notice your camera slowly uh, follows the environment? No. Yeah, pretty sure. Well, my eyeballs are slowly following the environment. Or take my eyeballs out. No, not do that. I'm a big fan of them, and I need them for video making. Mm-hmm. Video game playing and video game, well, video making. I've been thinking about how I want to make a video a video game one day. Mm-hmm. But it's just so involved. So much to do. You need a team of people. No, you don't. Yeah, you do. No, you don't. Yeah, you kind of do. Not anymore. I'm, well, you know what? Maybe I just need you, because I am no artist, so... You need somebody to make things that look like things. Oh, yeah. I know what things look like. You know what's funny is that everyone knows what stuff looks like, but no one knows how to draw it. Isn't that interesting? It is really interesting that uh, those little tricks that like, you have to learn, usually, from people who've done it before make all the difference. But why? But why? I mean, I have the answer. I just want you to like struggle for a while. Oh. Like, the why is it that if you know what stuff looks like, you can't make stuff look like that on paper? I think it's because you have to actually understand the physical processes. Like a, an example being subsurface scattering. 
if you don't actually know that you don't actually understand the concept of subsurface scattering how would you be able to recreate it without like painstakingly doing it you know pixel by pixel yeah but i also think it's it's because in in the real world there's no real lines Oh, straight lines. When you dr no, no, like line at all, edge. There's, there's no edge. Uh, we we perceive the edge between these characters in the background because of the color difference and the and the values. But there's no actual lines on their outlines. They don't have outlines. They don't have outlines. When you draw, you're suddenly creating an outline. Which is why they th there's a couple of strategies. Um, yeah, this is where the game begins. Yeah, right? this is the real game. There's a couple interesting strategies for drawing. Um, one of them is looking at your at what you're drawing and not your paper and drawing one line, like consistent, like never picking up your pencil. Huh. And it's actually crazy how good people can get drawing a face like that rather than the old fashioned like, you know. I'll put a line here, which is where the ears should go. So you're it, supposed to do the whole thing continuously? One line, yeah. Huh. And it works better. It's a better strategy for learning. I wouldn't say it looks better at the end because it's a fucking mess, but... Oh, it's but like, it's how you it's, develop the skill. It's a learning uh, tool, yeah. Neat. I, I gotta check if I can run. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Look at those thumbsticks dancing! <laughs> So run is the L stick down? Oh, you might, like you so you have can't to hold it. No, because if you click it, you uh, crouch. Look how hard that crouching uh, thumb thumbstick is going. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of something in like Bomberman. All I had in my head when I saw them dancing was that old demo on that. Uh, Ooh, on that. Um, what's it called? Do you remember that keyboard that Dad had? And that demo was like, do 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 I remember it being outlawed in our house. Yes. It has been outlawed! I decree. That was my, that was before, uh, Oscar Isaac was cool. He was the, he was the king in, in, in one of the Robin Hood movies. And that was like a, a, a feature in one of the trailers. He has been Aaron! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always love when really serious movie lines are kind of killed by like a really bizarre portrayal. Yeah. I, I feel like I had another example from our childhood, but it's looted me. You can't, you just throw so much shade at that man, fucking no scoping him with a single action revolver or a single action rifle. Yeah, mad shade, bro. What is this? <sighs> Oh, I'm in love. Yeah, isn't that badass? That is a map. Buddy, maps should never be on the screen all the time. They should always be a mechanic integrated and into the And then I think level. you can, like, yep. Like wow, that? Wow, that is a really cool effect for its time. Holy shit. Yeah, dude. I mean, also for now, now's time, but... I thought there was a guy. I thought I saw a dude. <laughs> Down. But I, but I don't know. Down in the foxhole. I'm not sure. Open the door, you limey bastard! <laughs> they're limey because they had Lyme disease? No, I think they're limey because they ate limes to prevent scurvy. Uh, Both of us just made that shit up, so someone should look that up. Don't. And by someone, I mean the listener, because I don't care. The listener. What are they, the viewer? What do you want to call them? S singular. They're friends of mine! <laughs> they're not friends. We're not necessarily friends. Yeah. In fact, I have a list of people, st types of people, that I uh, outlaw you from watching. <laughs> You're gonna ban people from watching our free YouTube show? No, no, just like outlaw. Just it is outlawed. It's outlawed. This that is a, that was a great Robin Hood movie, though. Which one was that? That one had. Russell Crowe? Um, Russell Crowe. Ah. And it had that whole... Crow rise and rise until lambs become lions. <laughs> and uh, it also had um, Kevin Durant. No, Durand. Not the basketball player Kevin Durant. The actor Kevin Durand. Wow, that shouldn't be allowed. Who looks like... Um, he's, the, he's the exterminator. It's locked. In um, mm, the strain, 
He, he looks like he's um like he's a Baldwin brother. <laughs> nice. You know who I'm talking about. You've seen Kevin Durant before. He played Blob. Probably. Oh. He's like he's like. Did you I, call me Blob? I called you Bob. <laughs> you know he always has like a thing with his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. That's Kevin Durant. He's the exterminator. You're right. Yeah. So I don't know. I think you have to what? grab the the thing. Yeah. No, I can't go any further down. That's oh. it. This oh, you have to raise the boat. The boat first. Which I thought was the switch on the thing, but the switch on the thing didn't work. Well, he thought it was the switch, and it didn't really work. And then he it's actually a really simple system for weapons. I'm, I'm happy with it. Yeah, this thing. Gun. Oh, stupid me hitting X. He escaped the trap. It was complete. He grabbed himself. He ate some meat. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Is this thing? Oh, it's active. She active, bro. Bro. Get oh. out of there, Nigel. Hopefully you grab it and then use it as a weapon. Oh, that'd be badass. Like, like grab the head and then use the head as a gun. Yeah, there's a man Yes. Inside. <laughs> oh man, he's gonna shoot me. <laughs> I, I can't tell if I'm supposed to just, yeah, this is probably the way to do her. <laughs> you look like a mascot. <laughs> he reminded me of like the giant nose guy from the Simpsons. Yeah, he's oh, the man. fucking, he's the garbage can man. He's the garbage man can. <laughs> the garbage man can because he mixes it with blood and then he shoots everything. Jesus. <laughs> garbage man, you need to work on your manners. I just opened a, a gate somewhere. I'm going to pass that rusty gate for guns. Oh, man, no, I just out. heard, I'm pretty sure, in some form or... A Chris Cornell song. I've, I don't know if it was Soundgarden or Audio Slave. Wow. Damn. That man got bounced. There is so much character to this game. That they was probably one of the most entertaining car crashes I've ever seen. They animated it like uh, like an old cartoon. Like the Aristocats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, you know how Netflix does the thing where they show you like a, a snippet of a portion of a movie? <laughs> Instead of giving you a trailer? Yeah. Yes. Well, it was Twilight. And it was the scene where Eddie saves uh, Sad Girl from the from the car, you <laughs> yes. know. And then there's like a song playing in the background, and I'm like, "That's that. What is that? Soundgarden? I think it is." Hmm. Yeah. Chrissy Cornell. Yeah. Chrissy. I don't like games where you can't jump, but I do understand that it helps like restrain the character a little bit. It stops them from bunny hopping, which is a common annoying thing in shooters. Well, this isn't competitive, bro. You ever see? No, it has multiplayer. Oh, it does have multiplayer. That's actually, yeah. Remember how, how much lie. we fucking, we, we, we played so much of the multiplayer in this game. It wasn't legit, though. It was bots, but. But it was still a blast, man. Like, I was impressed yeah. with how much fun it was. Yeah, and the monkey was too small. That's right. It's too small to shoot. His head, monkey. his head was at chest level, so you could headshot him easier, but he was really hard to shoot. He was the random task. Or, I mean, he was the odd job of this game. Can't believe I actually called him random task. When when the fucking... Um, when the parody takes over the original... Yeah. Honestly, who throws a shoe? Anytime I'm on a, an asphalt job, I see a giant steamroller, and like, what else am I going to think? Other than Austin Bowers. Yeah. No! Move! Move! And it's Michael McDonald, too. It is Michael McDonald. What is he doing? He is other seizing than, after than, I shot him in the funny bone. Yeah, taking, tanking damage. Oh, oh grab nice. the lever. Do you remember that weird sh thing when we were kids? That, uh oh. Like, uh oh. Oh, okay. That, like, animated show that was it was like a it was a court case over physics what yeah yeah uh, so they were okay. proving whether something happened and it was also teaching you physics sounds like a tvo kids thing it was weird canadian television canadian um uh, educational content is very strange but yeah, there was the the guy was like lever or do you prefer lever? I'll lever. I'll have a lever, and I and I prefer lever. 
and it was just, it was stupid, but it was it was good. It was well done. Yeah, Canadian educational television can sometimes be uh, questionable. The one that the one that really gets me is they remade the House Hippo commercial, mm. and I honestly have forgotten. Thank God, I've forgotten what was so terrible about it. But I remember it. 100% defeated the purpose of the original commercial. That's terrible. Why and would then you it, do that? And then at the very end, it like referred to you to this website where you could find like information about fake news. And I was like, sorry. So the commercial that's supposed to be about questioning what you hear on TV is telling you to just go to this website and trust what you find there? Oh my god. <laughs> oh! That'll do it. <laughs> That's the ticket. You know, it's like yo, you know, you, you, how often do you find TNT already strapped together with a clock on it? It's pretty nice. Well, also, why do you need a clock? It didn't really time it. Yeah, it did. Or did you shoot it? No, I didn't shoot it. Uh, yeah, I guess there was a bit of a timer. I just meant like it, it, it wasn't meant to go off an hour later. Could have just fused it. it. Is it me or is this one of the best uh, shooters 2022? So far. And I'm actually amazed at how much better this is in Time Splitters 2. I think yeah. one day it would be cool to do, you know, like a 20 minute playthrough just to show you how clunky and unrefined it is by comparison. Mm. I remember this being a, a section in the game where me and my buddies got stuck forever because I'm pretty sure this door you can go through, but if you don't do anything, it you can't, you have to hit A. If you don't hit A, Nothing happens. So we were just running around, checking. I was like, okay, well, everyone's I, dead. I had that this morning on Sniper Elite 5. Yeah? But there is nothing more annoying than being where you're supposed to be and not knowing what to do because of just some fucking button or console or computer. And I'm not a yeah. looking it up guy. So, like, we went and got more TNT. We tried blasting all of the doors. Sure enough, you just hit A. But no door requires a previously. There is one door. And every other door, Nigel opens for you. So it was just it was just very poor design, especially because the last door that you have to put A on, it tells you to. So this was clearly just an oversight, but it's part of the era where... It's part of the era <laughs> <laughs> where they didn't, they didn't have the opportunity to patch anything, right? So even simple mistakes, you had to just live with them. Yeah, well, that was the bit, like, people talk about, like, the old days. But back then, there's a reason why things were done that way, and it's because when you released it, it was done. That was it. Yeah, I wonder why they even do crunch time anymore when they can just fix it a week later. Oh, I and got often the answer do. to that, but it's going to take 50 to 100 minutes to explain. I will give you four. <laughs> How's that a, sound? That's even a lot. It's, um... The old-fashioned business motto, uh, I do because I can. And because I always have. And I'll see you in court. <laughs> you fucking tiny insects that I can crush with my foot. I see. So it's a power thing? It's, uh, it's just a lot of... The gaming industry is one of the last industries without unions. Hmm. Um, in fact, I think in Montreal, I think it is, they just started the first uh, the first video game uh, designers union because they're usually contractors. Mm. So they work years in, you know, in the same building and they have friends and what all that stuff. And then about? just one day you're just not invited back. And the crazy thing is that there are people in the gaming industry, in the, in the, um, in the gaming media and and just gamers who really think the whole thing's blown out of proportion and that they should just um, quit their belly aching because no one's got a gun to their head. And it's like, well, sure, literally, there's no gun to their head. You're right. They're not. They're not being like. They're not gonna die. But uh, when you when when you don't invite somebody back because they asked for more bathroom breaks, you you are putting a gun to their head. Yeah, well, and that's that's what's always really tough because, you know, it sounds like a union's going to be great, and it probably will be in some ways, but I also guarantee you it'll cause all kinds of other problems. 100%. You, change doesn't 
solely bring positive positivity it's going of course it's going to change things but it's kind of like you know with uber like it's only cheap because they don't pay the people who do the stuff right mm -hmm. and then when the government says you have to do that they're like we're gonna go out of business it's like yeah <laughs> well what was funny was they just that's what they said in california they were like uh hey you have to pay these people as employees and they said eh, we're not gonna operate in california right so you know good luck and then California, I think, uh, I think they actually might have, I think they still have Lyft, and I think they still have one other competitor as well. So it was only Uber that decided to to pack up shop. Do you even have Lyft, bro? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But I also noticed in these big cities, like I think it, it's sort of blown over, but there was this whole scooter rental thing. Whoa! Check this out. Isn't that me? Sure looks like it. Yeah, All right, this is where you get into this whole like other me gave me that key. Of course, it's a wormhole. All the time travel in the area must have Well, that's oh, right cuz earlier in the level so you skipped that cinematic there. Yeah. Oh, you were supposed to throw the key in there, doofus. Hey, no, you're supposed to go through the okay. portal first. Oh. What? And she said uh You'll She said you can't go through there. It might not be safe. And he's like, "Eh, fuck yeah. it." I love how he's got the Vin Diesel eyes. I know. You'll figure it out. Just make sure to pass it on when you're done. Ha! That was cool. Cortez, you can't just go walking through any wormhole you come across. They're dangerous. What are you talking about? Cortez, anytime you interact with yourself in a time loop, you run the risk of creating a time. <laughs> he's looking at us like this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much character. Uh, what were you saying? I forgot what we were talking about. Game design. Unions, lift, lift, right, right. Um, it was no these uh, these places were all dealing with this like electric scooter rental fiasco. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, I watch ordinary things. Oh yeah. See, what's interesting is I uh, so I mentioned um, I mentioned uh, Lazy Masquerade the last time we were together. Mm. And I don't remember that actually. Oh, oh, well, I oh the YouTuber. Yeah. yeah, the YouTuber. And so I mentioned that he. Um, uh, does spooky stuff like all spooky content, Ooh, spooky but he stuff. both sounds and looks like the guy from Ordinary Things. Hmm. It's so weird. I thought he had started a new channel, and then I realized this channel has been active for like six years, so it's probably not him. But yeah, every now and then I'll go back to Ordinary Things, where Ordinary Things are discussed. <laughs> <laughs> where Ordinary Things are explained. Oh yes, he um. Yes. Oh. He just shot his buddy in the head. Wow, and it didn't kill him. That's grounds for dismissal. <laughs> <laughs> we could put you in the hole for that. How do I? Oh, yeah, there we go. Who am I shooting at? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. What? Oh, smoke comes out of okay. grenades before they explode? No, I think that was just like dust from the environment. Who am I supposed to be shoosting? The okay. Not quite. Let's just do it the old fashioned way then. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! <laughs> that didn't do a lot of damage. No, it. Uh, it's because my shield. Uh, oh. Yeah, I got a shield on the right hand side now. You missed your shot. Oh no. Yeah, I must have. Well, okay. I think this is just fun. Okay. I think they just left it there. Fair enough. I like fun just as much as the next guy. Wow. That was fun. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> that was so bizarre. Who lands a plane like that? I also can't tell if that guy vanished or if he went invisible intentionally. Oh, she's um, wearing a lot of clothing. Whoa. All right. That is something. The Probably a... a, a a reason why we like this game. I don't know. I wouldn't doubt it. It's a nice cloth she's got there. She that... probably sell that on the internet these days. Yeah, and the heads would go for good too. Yeah, nice shrunken heads. Sorry, I I thought you just asked me if I have the key, which I do. Oh, I do not. I have a different key. <laughs> okay, I gotta go get a key. Or no, blow that up. Damn it. Nice. I'm impressed with how well that worked. Except it didn't blow up the barrel. 
Oh, which might not be an exp There you go. There we go, and that's why I've got the thing. You're free. Nice roll. Good job, combat lady. Girl. You could use more clothing, though. It must be cold here, and damn it! Do you keep doing that because it's the it's aim L. button in yeah, every other game? Yeah. You killed it. Captain Ash. <laughs> I didn't even know you could kill the limey bastard. <laughs> Should I eat more limes instead of grenades? <laughs> I wish I knew this all along. This is um, this is a while back actually. This is, this is a decent amount of this is, yeah, progress quite a bit, that we lost. Quite a bit. Fortunately, most of what I lost was uh, figuring out where to go. I also really appreciate how you went down the stairs like that without spinning the camera. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I I I know how to pimp walk. <laughs> I was gonna say yeah, you just you just been watching a lot of Mitch. Because oh. Mitch is a problem with cameras. So. Yeah, Mitch is slick. Yeah. Slick Mitch. Yeah, slick Mitch. Oh, yeah. He's, he's a slick bastard. The one thing the ladies know about Mitch, it's that he's slimy. So, I, I mean, I didn't say that. That's the same thing. Slick and slimy. Uh, That's why they sound the same. Um, technically, you're right. Now that I'm thinking about it. So, yeah, being slick's not a good thing. Shouldn't be a good thing. Yeah, baby. I'm slick in all the right places. Ugh. That's <laughs> gross. <laughs> Look at that guy's never looking the right way. <laughs> I think they they increase the padding around the crotch area. <laughs> the one thing they do that I find uh, pretty irritating. Fuck me. It's the pants. Fuck me. No. Um, <laughs> the, the one thing I find really irritating is just the way that it doesn't show you which way. The shots are coming from right and the shape of your health bar makes it seem like the shots are always coming from that side right boy you could suck up a storm a little harder bro. ah did i get him i don't think so i don't know if i got him well you win some you lose some it's the other way buddy <laughs> <laughs> i love that just a man and he disappears. And all the, the barrels always Looked jump. Looked like they were thrown by Half Thor Bjornsson. <laughs> Who the fuck is Half Thor Bjornsson? He's the mountain. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he uh, he was doing a strongman competition and he was throwing these kegs, no joke, 40 feet in the air. That's great. And I'm talking like 8, 9, 10 kegs in a row. He is a monster. This is what I was looking for. Oh, okay. All right. Now that we've seen it, off we go. I'm glad Move. that Tits got Captain Ash dead. Tits usually get people killed. That's kind of the way it goes. My word, young chap. You've made Tits kill me. Those are some wonderful reasons to die right there. <laughs> I've got two big reasons for you to kill me. One bosom. Two oh. bosom. Three bosom four. This is not air appropriate. This is not the right place to be either. Stop it stalled. You can go and shoot it now. Ooh, touch his bum. I don't have explosives to plant. Touch his bum. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go see if I can find some explosives. Damn, girl. I uh, there we go. Hopped in a colleague's work vehicle the other day and they had some sort of rap hits radio station and I swear it was Ice Cube saying uh, I got this no she says you got this put your back into it and he says I got this put your ass into it <laughs> but then they bleeped out the ass oh so it was like back and forth like you got this put your back into it I got this put your into it. Oh, I always <laughs> and, hate when they just mute and it. And then it was just like back and forth. Put your back into it. Put your into it. <laughs> Wouldn't even be a good song if it wasn't censored. <laughs> I just, I hate censorship. It's just if it's not if it's not appropriate, then don't listen to it. Well, that's what I the 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 idea of censorship pretty much proves that our country assumes people don't watch what their children are watching. Uh, right? That too, but it's also like this bullshit, um, like spongy corner thing. Like spongy corner. Like people can't <laughs> avoid corners on their own. You have to put sponges on the end, right? It's bullshit. Is what it is. You gotta nerf them. You're telling me that that a kid is gonna be seriously affected by. I thought I told you not to Fuck. This. 
Wait. This is one of my favorite cinematics. Wow. His face. <laughs> just like the, it's so 90s and they threw well it's two thousand, very 2000s but they threw the sounds on his hands yeah exactly i guess we're going to whenever this is i'm pretty sure this is the one where we hang out with the groovy dude the groovy dude with the train right so every level has a different character right yeah there's a companion yeah right and then they define the era and add some pizzazzery. And they always give you your first gun. 1969. 69, 69. So, you know the song, um, The Summer of 69? Yeah. Do you know Buddy wasn't old enough in 69? Like, that it, he wouldn't have been in, uh, I guess, high school? Really? He was like eight. I did not know that. Yeah, it was just a good song title. It was a good song title. Yeah, because the summer of... I got my first of... real streak string yeah. in the summer of 74. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Fade played it till my fingers bled. Remember, you're then that's when I met her! <laughs> <laughs> I lied about my age because the era was better. Ended up in Vietnam. <laughs> Somehow, yeah. <laughs> Where did he go? I was only 12 years old. Where did he go? It was weird. Janie got married. <laughs> that was an actual one for the song. <laughs> the girls get much nicer uniforms than we do. Uh, you want to wear the girls' uniforms? <laughs> yes, I think they give good freedom of movement. And they must be nice and cool in summer. <laughs> wow. Now I want to see what the women are wearing. Why do they look like, uh, sc or, um, Scuba, Scuba Steve? Steve. <laughs> Scuba Steve. <laughs> I almost called him Aquaman for a minute. They're totally Scuba Steve. Oh, holy crap. Also, the armor pickups are era appropriate. Isn't that cool? Oh, they did change it. That's right. Because that, that World War II one was like a leather vest. Yeah. And that looked like a bulletproof vest. Very nice. Oh, so that was just like a Easter egg in there. Where am, where am I going? I'm looking for my dude. Go up top there. Oh, you can't jump. Yeah, like, no it jumpies. looks like I should be able to. No jumpies. They they designed it that way, and then didn't give him a jump. So, is that like a control panel I missed? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, that's... Oh, that's, look at that. I got it from the that's pretty neat. What? Woo! We got some James oh. Bond motherfucker over here. Wow, personality. That's missing in video games. I want to see if he actually goes through the hole or if he just like walks through the <laughs> gate. We both did. I'll try these pipes. I, I bet you want to try the pipe, you fucking hippie. I really enjoy pistols. They feel so good in almost every game. Yeah. I often switch to them for fun. The, the yeah, sometimes. physics is really good, too. Sometimes I'll pretend that I'm using my pistol to save ammo, but then I'll have, like, full ammo on my big guns, and I still don't care. I just love blasting people with a pistol, especially this one. This is a really nice-looking gun. I don't think it's an M1911. I think it's just a standard 45, uh, but... It's like a Beretta. Yeah, it's like a Beretta. It's a Beretta. I think you're right. This door is locked. You find it strange, though, that that we're worried about children hearing shit on the radio, but we actively encourage them to use guns as play toys. Right? Fortnite is guns. Hey, there's no blood, but it's guns. And then there's a Nerf uh, a deal. Like, Nerf made a deal with Fortnite, and they now make Nerf guns designed like the guns from Fortnite. Really? And so we're, we're, we have been since, since like the 50s too. Like they used to have cap guns, right? Oh, absolutely. Like guns have been a child's toy for the longest time. But if I could be fair to the losers that want to censor things, mm. it would be that they too would not want their kids even having a Nerf gun. In fact, I remember this video that circulated last year right before Christmas of a Santa Claus telling a kid he couldn't have a Nerf gun because it was a gun. Right. And his parents were like, no, no. It's a Nerf gun, like, we're okay with that. And Santa's like, no, he still can't have that. What else do you want? And the kid starts crying, yeah. 
That's why Steven Crowder had him on the show, and he's like, we're gonna buy you two Nerf guns, because that Santa was a communist. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to be Santa Claus and just say, like, w just whatever it is you want, you can't have it. It's, it's not realistic. <laughs> Do you think my elves can form plastic? Listen. Do you want a wooden toy, or do you want a dolly? Pick one. Listen, you mobile phone using fuck. <laughs> the earlier you start to manage your expectations, the happier you'll be in life. Otherwise, you'll be a Karen. You'll be a character. You, no, Karen. I know. Do you really want to be on the internet as that guy? That guy? I don't know why Santa has like a spooky voice. I, don't All right. I have to say that guy. I don't think I said anything, anything to do with your strategy, here, buddy. I mean, it did just give me grenades, though. Well, and it doesn't seem to be yeah. interactable. So, doesn't it look like it though? It, I mean, come yeah, on, it's like hopping. It's not connected to anything. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so there's some screws loose on that. The, yeah, the installer forgot to secure it properly. Because I have a feeling I have to blow it up because there's like a gate that it's controlling. Oh. That's my thought. Hmm. But it is interesting to know that Nerf has a deal with Fortnite. I'd never heard that, but it actually does make sense. I find all the kid stuff really, like, it's like, creepy. You know, the, the way that, that big companies... Yeah, you're probably right about the generator. That's right. But the, the it's just the creepiness of, of like, <laughs> customizing your your advertising thing around children it's just icky yeah well and uh, there's a lot of countries that have rules about advertising to children and they don't fucking work no because the, it's like a they um they kind of just duck the whole thing like, on a technicality it's well, like, what, it's like we, we don't admit to advertising to children of that age but we clearly doing it yeah yeah exactly and i feel like at the end of the day it is the responsibility of parents to tell their kids that no, they can't have the thing they saw the advertisement for. Yeah, more than telling them, it's it's about education, right? Proper education. I'm not understanding. I'm confused. Do I have to... Or maybe... Un... <laughs> there we go. I figured it out. I'm so smart. Time splitters, future A button. I seriously, when in doubt, find something to push A on. <laughs> it doesn't even indicate. It doesn't even say A on this thing. Barely highlighted. <laughs> Barely an inconvenience. Actually, a lot of inconvenience. Yes, heavy inconvenience. Oh, you know what? They do have better outfits. And super cool in the summer. <laughs> so much more free motion. Freedom of motion. You still haven't seen Barry, eh? No, no, but I did finish all the burn notice. <laughs> I know, it didn't take me long. Jeez. I just blasted through it. Buddy, I'm like still in the second season. Well, I realized I've already seen all seven seasons, but I, oh. for some reason I thought I missed some. Uh. I thought like, because it was on Netflix once upon a time. And uh, it was... Um, it was good. Definitely uh, had a bit of a, a lull after a certain number of seasons. I'm not going to tell you what number that is. But they went away from the, like, every episode is its own episode towards more of a we're now in a continuous story environment. Oh, I actually really liked the... I liked the format in the early seasons. Me too. And that was... I did find that a little... I was like, yeah, okay, I get that you want to do, like, more complex stories, but I would prefer, you know, the kind of sitcom -y style of like oh now we're doing oh oh oh, oh 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 he probably explained it <laughs> yeah he did he did his name is harry tipper i think that's supposed to be harry tip like that's the joke uh, i think that's a cock joke yeah that's it's a big old a meaty joke. dick i do love that these people are totally cool with like three or four bullets in their spine <laughs> <laughs> he, he totally <laughs> shot that do a flip <laughs> Dual barrel roll. <laughs> knee capping. <laughs> oh, knee capped. That long silence was how long it took me to sneeze. 
Yeah, you're holding it in for a little while. I wasn't holding it. I was waiting for it. You were holding it. I was alive. saying, arrive. I think I have to blow that up so that he can get out of that hole. Yeah, that sounds familiar. There we go. This, Harry Tipper. This is it, though, man. This is how you make an engaging game where there's there's stuff to do. Oh, well, that didn't work out well. <laughs> Holy moly. Where did those men go come from? The other building, I suppose. Ah. Uh, that is a very strange design of that building. That They made a continuous wall on the front and then built... Harry Tipper has been killed. Man, my Harry Tip got caught in the building. <laughs> but imagine building that building. You have to erect that first wall and keep it perfect all the way across and then build both buildings off of it. It's, that'd be a lot harder to do than just building a wall between them. I would have it's continuous. Look at it. Yes. It actually did tie in pretty well. Yeah, you know what? You're right. I was going to say, I imagine they built this connecting wall after, but they couldn't have. They're like looped into each other. That could just be the siding, though. They might have built them separately and then sided it to look like one thing. I Either way, so. it doesn't look good, I got to say. <laughs> it's a terrible design. Like, you have to... Like, siding has to be um, kind of mixed with other elements of design, like trim, um, whatever you want to call it, the in-between things. What the fuck happened to this guy? Oh, he's drunk. <laughs> That's what you get, for Alki. being drunk. Yeah. America's got no place for alcohol. <laughs> nice. That was a good... <laughs> and, man, he, he didn't even arc that grenade shot. That went straight in. Oh, I love the extra zoom. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It takes you out of zoom, but you can zoom again while loading. It's interesting. A little no scope. A little bit of it. No 360s, just no scope. Well, the 360s thing is really just fancy. <laughs> that wasn't even close. It is funny how gaming got that intense, right? Like, it no longer became about being good. It, you had to, like, dunk on people. Yeah, that's... Well, and it's also interesting because I feel like matchmaking is not always done well. Actually, nowadays, it's this thing that we used to believe that we really wanted, which was called um, skill-based matchmaking, or S D M. No, there's a thing. There's a name for it. I forget what it's called. I'm uncomfortable with any acronym that has BM in it. Oh, okay. But continue. Uh, yeah, people hate it because uh, competition is supposed to have like, a spectrum, right? Right, so you end up only facing people that are at your skill level. And it becomes frustrating. Is that the idea? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, because you're you're uh, always like in the middle of the pack, essentially. So you're you never really know if you're improving because if you have a bad game, you just get put with people who are bad, which make you better. And then when you're better, you get put with people who are worse, who make you worse. So it's like a constant balance. It's yeah, it's like a roller coaster. Now I'm not into multiplayer anymore, so I don't really experience that. But so a lot of people have a real big problem with it. And they think that it should be like a much wider, it's going to be skill based, it should be like a much, much wider margin. Right, so that you're not playing against people that are way above your level, but you're also playing with a spectrum. Yeah, people above and below, really. But there's problems with that too. I mean, I, I used to play Siege and the first thing we did when you got into a match was just check all of the the other people and see how, well, how, how good they were. And they were all like ranked and stuff and it was like, oh good, these people are platinum. And our guy is bronze. Okay. Yeah, and that's exactly what we want. Yeah, yeah. No, and I, I see that. It's you're never gonna have a perfect solution there because not everybody plays the same amount, right? So there's gonna be massive disparities in, in people's skill. There's always gonna be an issue with multiplayer because people are the best and the worst part about it, right? It's always gonna be that way. Anything goes, baby. So nice. Scuba Steve! It's why I'm so into single player now. Because single player is a crafted experience. <laughs> He's got the girls one! <laughs> single player is a crafted experience. Like, they can actually make... A Did you see that? What? His foot got stuck. 
on the left side of the no, screen. No, I did not see that. Because this was this was originally in four by three, and they they up they upresed it and oh, yeah, and it got made it missed. sixteen by nine, so it wasn't supposed to be visible. I love too that there are women you get to shoot. Yeah, equal opportunity. Equal murder. opportunity. Yeah, they get. I actually, God, I actually got that question. Uh, someone said, "What does equal opportunity employer mean?" And I said, oh, it means they're not racist or sexist. And the person just looked at me like, no, what does it really mean? It's like, no, seriously, like people actually write that in job descriptions. Like, we don't discriminate. Yeah. Well, you're not supposed to. It's not it's, supposed to be a selling feature, bro. Yeah, it's it's like you sit down in a Tim Hortons and, and on the wall it says 100% ethically sourced. Oh, cool, man. Right, so that means you didn't kill the animals? Is that what you're telling me? No, no, ethical means um, the way you got it from the people. Oh, fair trade, not all that, yeah. all that jazz? Okay. That shouldn't be a selling point. That should be a standard. Exactly. That's exactly. not the world we live in. And I think that's, that's you're right, that's the problem is that, well, as <laughs> other people don't do it that way, and I, I get that, but what I don't understand is how people are so easily tricked by just like a simple... Oh yeah, we're fully ethical. Okay, and yeah, what, what and does I, that mean? Oh, it means that we pay them like because you know people say like, oh, it's fair trade, right? We pay them a fair wage, and you say, okay, well, how much do you pay them compared to the the competition? Oh, well, we pay them a dollar fifteen, and the competition pays them a dollar. I'm like, okay, that is better, but it's not like you're paying them Western wages. People right. assume that you're paying them like ten bucks an hour, right? What well, people are are easily convinced by those those like fluff pieces that companies make for themselves those like a doom doom baba shuba dooba smiling faces <laughs> dude you should make commercials a baba daba daba shuba daba ethically sourced a shaba da boo boo ba doo doo anytime we find out that a husband is beating his wife we tell him he can't work here <laughs> <laughs> therefore you should buy our sons <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the competition pays them more and then we can't afford to pay the competition so then we turn a blind eye to domestic abuse shuba doo doo also bobby kotick is a sexual predator i just always find it weird when they they go like oh yes and um <clears throat> our product is you know absolutely 100 percent. you know we we support like just fill in the blank like we support you know the LGBTQ community or we support Latin American communities and it's like you sell salt like I'm not really <laughs> sure what this has to do with any community it's funny when people ha take this moral high ground about like oh I don't buy this 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 thing because they do this thing and it's like that's actually the whole industry you're talking about does yeah. that thing yeah but you found out that one group does it also allegedly Bobby Kotick is a sexual predator allegedly of course allegedly thoughts and prayers allegedly the thoughts and prayers yes until proven otherwise. Until proven by the court of public opinion. You know what's really wacky? Activision Blizzard. Which sounds like a great fucking meal from DQ. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, what a fucking wacky combo. C Call of Duty and World of Warcraft are owned by the same people? Yeah, that does seem a little odd. Okay. Crazy. Also, um, uh, Bungie? No. Yeah, Bungie was purchased by Sony for a lot of money. Bungie was purchased? Bungie. Okay, maybe I did hear about this. Not Sony. Did I say Sony? Sony. Yeah, Sony. I don't know. Might have been Sony. <laughs> <laughs> one of those, one of those things. This is not a news show. I think I'm done down here. I love the reticle on this thing. Yeah, I isn't don't it understand sexy? it, but it's cool. Dude, doesn't it look like uh, a helmet with like some teeth coming out from the bottom of it? Like it looks like a skeleton almost. Yeah, it kind of looks like a um, okay. like a Jack Two helmet with the ears. Okay, it, to me, it reminds me of um, the like little icon for Shell Shocked. That's what I think of. Like, like the an army shell, helmet like the game. Yeah. Oh yeah, maybe. I did I tell you I got that. I actually found that. No. Two dollars. That's, that's oh, your buddy. Oh, you were dressed. <laughs> you were dressed like the enemy. 
Oh god damn it. At least I know where I'm going now. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I got it and it runs like shit and it feels like garbage. I, I don't know why I liked it so much when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I loved it. It was just, it was like, oh my god, I can't, I can't believe a game is this good. And then it would freeze like 50 minutes into the game at the same spot. So I brought it back to old Blockbuster. And uh, I think I got another copy and it had the same problem. Really? Yeah. Because I don't actually remember that part, but I do remember that. Jesus. I do remember that part that you just mentioned where, like, it kept freezing on you. And I wonder if that's why you enjoy it so much. Because it's, like, the thing you were never able to get. It's my, um... It's my JFK. It's <laughs> it's your JFK. You never yes. had an opportunity to fuck me over. Mm, mm-hmm. No disappointment, because the expectation was was never met. You either die a hero, or you wait until you become a villain. Yeah, and the game freezing was like his uh, hamburger helper brain being blown all over his wife. Hamburger helper brain? Yeah, that was like a family guy joke. <laughs> it was Mary McCheese. <laughs> it was, oh my his hamburger God. brain guy, his cheeseburger brain got Mary blown McCheese up. being assassinated. And she starts eating it. Like She hops up on the back of the car and starts shoveling it into her mouth. Family Guy was so fearless, yeah. so fearless, man. The I love that episode about the like I don't know if it's woke that they're making fun of, but it's like no, it's just millennials in general. And the guy walks in and he's got a man bun, of course, and he doesn't look up from his phone at any point in the in the bit, and it's like you know Brett has been fired. It's like who's Brett? It's like uh, oh fuck, how does that go? Shit. He's like, you probably shouldn't have fired that. Oh, fuck, shit. <laughs> now I'm messing okay, up the whole Okay, hold junk. on. Start over. Yeah, start over. start over. He walks in. I think I think a guy says, just like questions one thing about the guy. And he goes, uh, I don't like that. And I'm tweeting about you. And you're trending. And you're fired. Oh, yes. Yes, I have seen that one. And I mean, it might as well be a Netflix employee. Yeah. Like, quite honestly. And I think that that, that guy's name was Brett. I think that's why. Oh and then my God. Peter's like, who's Brett? And he was like sitting right next to him. The only, like, I, I really love ruthless jokes and ruthless comments. Like, especially when they're, when they're deserved. But uh, one of my absolute favorites. There you of, go. Yeah. One of my absolute favorites of all time. And I'm not even sure how much sense it makes, but it was just so vicious when it was said. I think it was uh, somebody, um, or it was Magic Johnson had said something to Dennis Rodman. Mm. about like how he's de- been dealing with AIDS mm. and so De- Dennis Rodman goes or I forget how he starts it but he says something along the lines of like uh, yeah man well come over here and I'll spit in your mouth and accelerate your symptoms wow I just thought first of all that's a self own like you you're saying you're so dirty that you will give people all kinds of shit yeah I'm people like will die if you spit on them yeah and I just love how he's happy about that he's like excited about it i hate own though own is like the one of the dumbest trends it is a little it is kind of stupid I, I, it really was highlighted for me when i was watching kick ass like a year ago hmm. and the, the the kid who plays mclovin he's like oh yeah we'll totally own well that was anticlimactic and wait he was in the first one? He's in both. Oh, that's right. He's, he's the a son. Good and then guy. in the second season, he's the villain. Uh-huh. The second was actually way better than I remembered. Yeah, the second was pretty good. I thought I didn't I thought it wasn't very good at the time. And then when I watched both of them kind of in a row on one weekend, I thought, yeah, this is this is solid stuff. Like it had enough serious stuff to kind of ground the the story, but was silly enough that it didn't really take itself too seriously. Especially when you got Jim Carrey showing up and just beating the shit out of him. Who's America baseball bat? Yeah. Although he um he actually like spoke out about the violence after the movie was done filming. Oh fuck you! That's that that always drives me bonkers when people do that. It's like yes, yes, violence and things. You really think that violence is what's causing people to be disconnected? I would. Like, if someone said, hey, you know, you, you have to ban something in order to prevent violence, I would say, okay, social media, 100%. Um, I would say 
excessive entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Because, like, when we were kids, remember watching Saber Private Ryan? And being, uh, like, as close as you can get to PTSD as a child? Yeah, just blown away. It was real. It was like, oh my god, that that happened. <laughs> that was what they went through. That was hor- That was horrible. We like we went to see our grandparents later that day, and our dad was like, "Yeah, they watched Saving Private Ryan last night, and they're kind of still a little." I don't even remember somewhere that. else right now. I remember that vividly. But um, there's a monkey in there. Monkey. Hey, reference. Um, careful with that gun, buddy. Just put that in his mouth. Anyway, now you see violence, and it's like cool. <laughs> yeah, it's nor it's very normal. And it's it's not just violence, it's everything. You know, you know, things that are devastating to an individual aren't interesting anymore in a show because you've seen it too many times. Cheating on a spouse, um betrayal, you know, financial hardship. They've become stereotypes and they're normal now. So when people talk about things that happen to them, it's like yeah, well, it's life. <laughs> Instead of it being significant the way it should be. Yeah, and I I do think you're right. I think that the biggest problem is is disconnection from other people cuz it's so easy to now live your life realistically insulated from all but a small like literal handful of people, like people you can count on one hand. If you want, you really don't have to see people anymore. You can e-transfer your rent. You can work from home. You can have your Uber driver and your groceries and your everything delivered to the door, knock on the door, and then leave before I open the door. Like, you can, you, well, in you fact, can people, really completely isolate yourself. People were encouraged to do that for two years now. Yeah. Right? So you add all those things on top of each other, and we already know that Japan has had this problem for a long time. Right? Where they're, they're concerned about, like, the rising suicide rates because people are so disconnected from each other. Right, so I, I, to me, it just seems like violence has been around forever. You want to talk about spaghetti westerns and you know all of the various. You go back and watch old movies, and some of them are really vicious. Or like, how about real violence? That too. You're gonna act like people, like like 18 year olds, weren't handed actual rifles just a hundred years ago. You know, gonna pretend that we're more violent now. Well, isn't that... I, I thought that was the whole argument, though, is that because you're watching the violence in, like, a thing you're disconnected from, it's different. Like, you you uh, don't respect it. Whereas yes. if you had to actually go and fight, you might feel it's differently. Disassociation. Yeah, something like that. And, uh, and desensitization is the other word that they use. Yeah. And it just... When you look at that, it, I mean, I, honestly, I think the number one thing for me is over-medication. Over-medication, I think, is one of the most dangerous things we've ever had to deal with. We're really, we're very focused on, uh... Of course. Push A on the giant fucking door to That open. looks like all the other doors. We're, um, we're very much focused on uh, simple, easy solutions. And I, you hear it too often, I know, it's a bit of a meme now, but the, the instant gratification is quite a problem. It's something I experience all the time, right? Like, I'm not getting what I want, and I'm like, I'm going to put this down. Even though I know that if I put enough energy into it, I will actually enjoy the final product. But it doesn't make me feel good while I'm doing it, so. Yeah, and instant gratification isn't just a problem for children. It's a problem when we start doing that with our governance, right? When we try and govern in that way where it's just like, oh, 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 no problem. Just put in this rule, and everything's fine. Right. right, like all you gotta do is X. Everybody's got one of those things they have to say. Like everyone thinks that you could just shift something dramatically, and it would just like solve all the problems. It's like just get rid of all the something something. Right. Yeah, I actually <laughs> as think as if we're not like as if everything isn't connected, right? I think the greatest danger that we face is people who think they know better than everyone else. Oh, so like all that, of them? Well. Yes, for the most part. I still love... Hit that button. That, like, weird le- lever. Maybe shoot the thing. I'm gonna try not to. But a new one will come out. The a new one will come out. There was this great... You might have to hit the lever. A new one! Yeah. 
Okay, it's well, all A's, bro. It's all course, A's. Of course, you knew what you were doing. Exactly. I mean, I don't like when people don't when the people don't know what they're talking about. But I am not one of those people because I do know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's this, there was this great example, I guess, of, of how people are, where this guy was like, uh, "How can how can the states be?" Um, Oh, that thing, yeah. There you go. Oh, and then you use it to blow up a door? Yeah, this, uh, this big door back here. Okay. How can the states be in debt? Why don't we just make more money? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. And then somebody says that would cause inflation and destroy the economy. And he goes, I don't know what that means, but I could run the country better. <laughs> and I think that's everyone. That's like the majority of human beings. I don't know what you're talking about, but I could definitely have done it better. Uh huh. Well, I've, I've been thinking about it recently, and like, if somebody told me that I had to be the leader, uh, you know, of our country, and you know, what's your policy? What's your platform that you would run on? My platform would be I'm going to do less, because it's the one thing that no government has ever promised in the last hundred years. I will just do less. I will just be less involved. Yeah. You fucking figure it out. That's how society's <laughs> supposed to work. My job is to keep you from hitting each other. The and that's only, about it. The only way that, yeah, I mean, the only way that I would be the leader of any country is if I had to, and they made me. And then they'd be like, what's your policy on anything? Fuck you. That's my policy. What is it? What do you want to talk about? Food? Fuck you. How about healthcare? Also, fuck you. <laughs> People are just fucking clapping, right? Because everyone's like, I know what he means. <laughs> Yeah, fuck you too. Yeah, I understand that, and and I honestly think that's what it comes down to. Is like, I I think, I think a society is supposed is not supposed to be run like a household. I'm not daddy. It should right. Be, it's delegation, man. They you can't control everything. You have to set things up so people can control the 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 little world that they're in. Well, and the other factor is if you can't trust people to the point where you got to put in like tons and tons and tons of useless laws about how people should behave, then you're fucked anyways. Because laws don't make people behave ways. Police do when they point guns in their face, right? So you can't just, like, legislate your way into good people. You either have them or you don't. Buddy, we got this funny situation uh, across from our apartment building. So spend about 20 minutes a day hanging out on the balcony. And in that 20 minutes, the shit that we see just in a short period of time is amazing. And it's really highlighted to me how unimportant or how (laughs) nice how uh people just can't fucking like handle themselves they they need they can't even handle it when there's a sign that tells you exactly what to do you're talking about with the roads there's a construction going on here the construction has turned uh a two lane into a one lane and the the, the streets has been has been painted new. The fucking cones are everywhere. There's everything in the world you would need to tell you how you're supposed to navigate through this thing. And yet, in the 20 minutes that we're on the balcony, we see about two or three people almost driving to oncoming traffic because they're driving with their fucking memory. This, this has been going on for two months. How long has it been since you've been here that you still remember how to drive there without your eyeballs? Yeah. This wasn't a theory I had until two months ago. I just figured out the driving by memory thing, and I'm mad about it. <laughs> anyway, at the same time, the construction has also prevented people from driving into the parking lot uh, across the way. There are several ways to get into that parking lot. There's three or four, but the one that they used to use is now blocked. There are cars in the parking lot, brother. So you have to think that they got in there somehow. They didn't just crane them in or block them while they were doing construction. And the amount of people who just park on our side and walk across through a construction, an active construction site to get where they're going is amazing. It seriously happens three or four times in 20 minutes a night. Wow. For months. And then the funniest thing happened. While I'm getting angry about this, and my, my thought is like, okay, imagine myself trying to get in there. I'm driving along, can't get in there. Fuck, keep going, no way. Go the other way. Oh, there's a sign. That's really interesting. There's cars in there. There's got to be a way to get in, right? My buddy tells me, hey, the other day I was up in the plaza across from where you live, and I couldn't get in there. 
but I noticed the cars were in there and thought there's got to be a way in. So I kept driving until I found a way in. And I was like, oh my god, dude, that's exactly what I fucking said! Well, thank god your friend <laughs> has at least got some sort of a head on his shoulders. But that's the thing, a lot of people are so afraid of being like the outlier or the odd one out. Like, if you, if you go and start a line in a Walmart in a place that a line doesn't start, they'll follow it. Like, mm -hmm. people will get in that line. Even if it doesn't make any sense, even if you're 60 feet away from the cache, they will still get in that line, just in case. I mean, everyone can't be wrong at the same time. Oh God. That's actually almost exclusively how we do it. We are we are wrong in droves. You're we, wrong together. We, yeah, yeah, we don't get we don't get wrong in, in small groups. We get wrong in majorities. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Anyway. Got it. Someone got a seven kill streak. Those are, uh, he called a helicop. Shout, you wanna play? On the PS5. Or the Xbox X Series and it's. Res, res, res 1440p for some reason. There we go, there we go. I mean, it's 4K, but who has a 4K television? How do I? Oh. Cool. Ooh. Oh, it's an anti air gun. It's gonna automatically. Fire oh, it, the entire you're volley. Fucked, bud. Wow. Couldn't have just fired one. You know, I don't know why, but that makes me want to give a call back to um, Trailer Park Boys. I've never heard another show that uses the same level of intensity when they deliver the F word. Like, when he is talking to, you know, Randy or Leahy or the cops or whatever, he's like, Bud, you are fucked. Fucked. Like the, <laughs> it's five syllables, the pronunciation of the word. It's awesome. <laughs> That's so funny. I, it, it took me a while to really notice like the, the Ontario isms in like real life. I always noticed it in Trailer Park Boys, but felt like it was like a very local thing, right? When I started to notice, I started working with a guy who would always say things like sender bud or, or just giver or going yeah. out for a rip before the song came out. The and full send one, that's a new one, though. Fairly, yeah. But it's like, it kind of goes together with the way that we uh, simplify and exaggerate and, like, under-exaggerate as well sometimes. Like, uh, a lot of people that I know will say, um, you know, if someone has, like, you know, they've, they've uh, played a game for, like, 10,000 hours, they'll say, like, yeah, he's played a couple hours. Oh yeah, few few minutes. He's, he's played a little bit, right? And it's like this this, this extreme under exaggeration. Something explodes, and they're like, "Well, that was spicy." Uh, uh, uh. My yeah. favorite though is this uh, sort of sarcastic response when something happens, like uh, somebody bonks their head, and then someone else goes, "Yeah, there's a thing there." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used to think that was a real dick move, but now I realize it's more of a coping mechanism. Yeah, like, and like, it, it helps break tension sometimes. Yeah, like a Holy guy, a guy shit. is like, in, you know, he hits his, he stubs his toe, and he's like, mother, just fucking, shit, fucking, and it's like, there's a nail there. <laughs> the best is um, on The Office. They actually had one that I thought was like funnier than maybe it ought to have been but stanley started doing this thing where he would give you a really complicated explanation so let's say you were like oh i don't understand how to do this you'd say all right well the first thing you do is you fill out this form and you put it in the mail and you mail it back to this address and then when they give you a reply email you shove it up your butt <laughs> so you give them this like long complicated explanation that always ends with shove it up your butt I do remember that. <laughs> oh, and it was the only thing he was excited about Oh, he, he loved it. <laughs> the, oh, oh my God! Some of the pranks on that show are would be like amazing, you know, YouTube jokes all on their own. Like one example was um, Dwight or uh, uh, Jim keeps pranking Dwight as always, and um, Pam leaves for school, so he's trying to find like a new person to do these pranks with. Yeah, and he finds out that Stanley really likes pranks involving meatballs, so he just like fills Dwight's desk with meatballs, <laughs> and then Dwight goes out at the end of the day and splits all the meatballs with Stanley. <laughs> so Jim is just like feeding them. 
just really simple, stupid stuff like that. But uh, they really, they did figure it out. The show falls apart when Steve Carell leaves, like for sure. Uh, but I, I think of all shows, it did a pretty good job lasting and not being, you know, kind of redundant and useless in its final seasons. I thought it was interesting that they figured out it doesn't really have to be Steve Carell as long as it's a uh, a real goober of a boss. So yeah. I, I actually felt like Andy worked pretty well. It definitely wasn't it wasn't the same, but it was like a nice stand-in, I suppose you could say. Yeah, it, and I think part of it too is that it, it was uh, season seven when when Steve Carell left. So when you're in seasons eight and nine of a show, you're already pushing it. Yeah. Like, there's not a lot of shows that make it to that stage, and they're still razor sharp like they were at the beginning. Yes. Although, one thing that I noticed, and someone pointed this out to me in a YouTube video that I watched, but Jim and Pam are terrible people. Terrible. Are they? Terrible people, yes. They're constantly putting their own needs above other people's in super selfish ways. Like, it's kind of funny the when you look back and you go, oh, wow, like, they were such lovable characters at first that you just kind of assume they'll always be lovable. Huh. But yeah, they're actually complete dicks in the final season. It's really kind of interesting. I don't know if that was conscious or if that was just like part of joke writing. Who knows? Obviously it's jokes, you know. Shows change their writers, right? And that's and, part and of it. From what I've heard, there's actually some pretty bad environment. Like the, Not shot. The environment. Yeah, wow. The environment can be really bad in writers' uh, rooms. Rooms like uh. the... I forget who was saying it on SNL, but it was like... When you, when you, you, you have to pitch the idea to a room full of writers, and a lot of them are, like, actively trying to get their own bits on the show. Yeah. So there would be lots and lots of times where you'd tell your bit, and people just wouldn't laugh at it because they don't want anyone else to feel like it's funny enough to be on the show, because they want to be on it, right? And then you know, and then those same people would then laugh at their own skit Ugh. to try to, yeah, yeah. And that was the exact uh, response. I think it was on Joe. I think I heard that one. That was, that was Joe's exact response. That uh, I get it. Like I get that that's uh, in an unavoidable part of human nature, but it's just so shitty. Yeah, the part. The problem is the. It's about wanting to get to the right solution instead of it making sure that you're the one that, want, that has the solution, right? Well, exactly. Isn't it about the show being funny? And honestly, I think the answer is no for those people. They're like, no, it's not about the show being funny. It's about me furthering my career. Otherwise, you wouldn't be behaving like that. Is that a robot cat? Like, why is it? I think it's stuffed. Oh. Oh, I think it's like part of the... Boss no, fight. no, you're right. It is a robot cat. Later, you can actually pilot it. Yeah, and I drive so. it around. You're right. It's got wheels. It's, it's got someone on his feet. That's why I thought that's kind of looks weird. And it looks like its head has a hinge on the back of it. Green gas is the worst kind. Do you have explosives? I don't. Hmm. But and what I probably, do have yeah, there you go. is the ability to pull a switch. There, there we go. go. It's a booby switch. It's a booby trap. Nice. And it's got and it can fall over. <laughs> it's got squealing wheels. <laughs> oh my god, this is amazing. And you know what? I bet you its head does open. It's like a dog jar or something. It might be explosives or something. It shoots out of that. Oh, flip over. Oh, I'm st she's stuck. Ex she's straight up stuck. All right. And then grab it and bring it with you. No, it's like, it's stuck. Uh -oh. I burned out right into there. <laughs> oh, right up the bum. <laughs> and shove it up your butt. I love this super hippie. All right, let's do it then. Get to the missile. Hmm. Unlock, I think you have to use the cat bomb. Unlock the door. Oh. Wow. Cool. Guess I like that. that. Does that? I can't hmm. even activate the cat anymore. Uh oh. Huh. Rot row. Well, I'm glad it does that. 
I don't have any explosives either. Oh. That'll do it. And we're off. I should wait. I should have waited until he walked in the room and gassed him. <laughs> I was gonna say, did you just press A to continue? Oh, always. Oh, it's old fashioned. You put the you put the card reader in there. Classic. Sexy's computers. Man. Maybe if I pull out these wires. <laughs> his hair. Did you see his hair? I did. Yes. <laughs> they the animation principles of this one are incredible. Because most this era was very rigid. Wow. Okay. Oh, I see. A I'm hacking mini game. Where is this supposed to go? To the bottom. That green. Okay. Okay. The I see it. Here we go. Or maybe we're mixing things. Never mind, because there's a green one down there. There's a green one on the left, too. Oh, is there? Yeah, there you go. That's gotta be good, right? And then probably connect that one to something else? Or do you just exit? Oh, I'm not done. Oh, is there another entrance? Yeah, there you go. And where's the other exit? Oh, it's on the bottom left there. Oh, shit. That's really hard to see. Yeah, I don't actually know what to do. Good 20. Oh, fuck. 18 seconds here. Yep. Now you had it. Yep. Wait, which way? Yep. Yep. Keep going. <laughs> I'm not understanding. <laughs> okay, it's blue to blue and green to green. So we're just going to have to let this uh, missile take off. Yeah. Okay. Try again. Oh, I see where the blue and the blue is now. Okay. Please tell me the checkpoint is defusing the bomb. Close enough. Yeah, it's another opportunity to use the cat cam. Yeah, exactly. Would have been great if I could have grabbed him and like pulled him down into the train. So you can't blow it up, unfortunately. <laughs> so there's no purpose other than it's funny. Yeah. That's it. 100%. <laughs> Isn't it funny how comedy changes? Because we would have laughed just at the fact that it was a cat, and now we're laughing at the fact that it used to be funny. You mean once upon a time? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's hilarious because that used to be comedy. Like, the early 2000s version of a joke was like calling somebody a faggot. And that was comedy. Yeah, yeah. And every, every now, and you hit, uh, now and again, you hear someone say, like, in an old movie or something, you're like, oh, oh, that is, doesn't sound right anymore. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a different era. I think part of it, um, part of it that frustrates me is, like, there are certain words that I can legitimately understand why people are offended by them, and then there's other words that are just fucking nonsense. And that, I, I find it difficult to understand why people are so moody about it. Okay, so I think I'll get purple first. Oh, they switched them. That's cool. They did. So you can't just get the easy solution. Nice. That was much better. <laughs> All right, bro. Let's go save your old bitty. Is this girl like a gun? Is that the joke? I don't think so. No, nah, I think she's strapped to the railroad tracks, like good old fashioned villain style. Sweet. Callus! <laughs> you need some working man's hands for that? <laughs> Callus! I, that, I love how he reacts to those bullets. Oh, how floppy he is. <laughs> <laughs> He's barely paying attention to me. <laughs> He's like, I'm just now realizing the impracticality of a jetpack. This is not what I expected. <laughs> that was amazing. He was like one of those, one of those workout things that's like strapped to the ground and you punch it and it comes back at oh you. Oh my god! Yeah, either that or a wacky arm flailing inflatable tube man. Yeah, but they don't have any structure. That's true. He yeah. had he had some real structure. He had rigid bodies. He was body like a wobbuffet. Oh whoop, whoop. yes, or the those are in those like a wobbuffet looking thing in uh, Wind Waker. Oh really? Yeah, like the the ju the juju juice. What are they called? Here she is. Oh, I recognize her from. She's like a she's a main character. Oh, this act this cinematic is awesome. Come on, spaceman. 
Great timing. Is it really, really far away? Is it the joke? Hey, stop ruining the joke, <laughs> man! <laughs> oh, that stopped pretty abruptly. <laughs> oh, man. Awesome. What is she tied, tied with? Garlic? Yeah, you know. The thickest looking ropes I've ever seen. Some nice Miller rope. Perfect. And then in the, the next time we do this, we'll yeah. uh, we'll get to go in the haunted house with this creepy bitch. Yeah. Funny how it used to be that she was, like, we would slut. Wow, this show is so, this is really far ahead of its time. Like, this, these jokes feel, like, contemporary. A little bit, yeah. Oh, I forgot about that part. Wow, they even did the thing that they wouldn't figure out until like later Spider-Man and Deadpool episodes, which is that you still want to move the eyes even though they're not really there. Oh yeah, oh. Like, like his eyes actually squint even though they're right. robotic. Yeah, because it's it's expressive, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, he's he's fantastic. I love the way they put together Cortez. Anyway, all right. Next time, uh, Mansion of Madness in 1994. Hell yes. Next time. Science is based here, then the time travel.